Hey yo, what up? It's your boy. So this is a pretty heavy. I'm sure you've seen a couple of other people making videos on it, maybe saw it in a few articles and whatnot, but I wanted to talk about this video because I think it's a really important topic that needs to be discussed, especially when talking about the especially modern anime community, the online modern anime community. Everyone knows and it's pretty evident that anime has gotten very, very popular over the years. Hell, some might even call it mainstream in a sense. And definitely the explosion of new anime fans into the community is a great thing in a lot of cases, especially for longtime anime fans and it's great for the anime industry. But when something gets really popular, something gets more mainstream, more eyes are put onto a new medium, they're both two different types types of people that I would say are on opposite ends of the spectrum. You have on the one hand really hardcore fans who are genuine fans who love the medium, who love the shows, who love the creators and just enjoy everything about that show and want to further propel it to more of a mainstream audience and to make it bigger and that's fantastic. Everybody wins. Everyone's happy. We get to talk and discuss and have a healthy discussion about anime and different anime topics and everyone is engaged and excited. It's good for everyone. But on the other hand, you have what they call fans who are merely taking this medium of anime and regardless of whether it's of a lack of understanding, a lack of compassion, a lack of empathy, or hell, maybe it's people just getting too into it that turns them into some of the most toxic people on the internet. Today, we're going to be talking about the latter uh, of the more toxic side of the anime community and what that has caused for a particular show and a particular set of people. That's right, today we're going to be talking about Oshinoko. As of me recording this video, it is the hottest anime of the season. Uh, I am watching it. I've been a huge fan of the manga for the longest time. I'm obviously watching the anime as well. And it is a fantastic series that delves into kind of the darker realities of fame and stardom, regardless of whether that be in the acting industry, music industry, model industry, idol industry. I mean, recently in an episode of Oshinoko, they even touched upon like social media people and like even YouTubers. There's a character who is literally a YouTuber in the show. So that definitely hit home for me. But with the recent episode, uh, that being episode six, it discussed a very heavy and touchy subject. Uh, that being the, I guess, consequences of being being put in front of a large, merciless audience that will judge you based on what you have put out onto the internet and not judging you for the type of person that you are. I think it's someone of any level of fame, any level of notoriety, any num number of name value is subject to, you know, at least once or twice in their career. And there is a particular character in that show who, upon being in a reality TV show that the main character is also a star in, uh, unfortunately does some actions within the show that gets the fans of that show essentially cyberbullying her into almost her at the end of the episode jumping off a bridge and taking her own life. It is a very brutal episode and as much as it was an incredibly brutal and hard hitting episode, so far as of uh, the recording of this video, it is probably one of my favorite episodes in the show. Um, I, I think that the way that they went about the depiction of that particular episode was done in a very tasteful yet very real and hard hitting way and I think a lot of people who watched that episode took to heart the struggles that that particular character was going through. And Apologies if that is like spoilers for episode six, but uh, I highly recommend you watch this show because it is absolutely fantastic. And a fair warning before I move on with the rest of this video that uh, the things that I'm going to be talking about today in this video are very touchy, uh, very, uh, you know, might be a topic that a lot of people do not want to hear about as it has to do with things like taking your own life, cyberbullying and stuff like that. I mean, even this Anime News Network article that I'll be referencing today uh, has a warning at the very beginning uh, that takes you to, you know, uh, some lifelines and some, you know, help centers that you can go to if you yourself are experiencing those kinds of things. So if you, just a fair warning before we start the video, um, if you don't want to watch this video because you don't want to hear about these topics, 
that is totally fine. Uh, I have a ton of other videos on this channel that are a lot more lighthearted than this one that you can guys can go and watch. But if you would like to continue, uh, then please stick around. And as the anime news article here has done, I will also leave some uh, lifelines and some places that you can go to if you yourself are experiencing those down in the description below. So please do check those out. So with that out of the way, we are going to be talking about uh, the unfortunate circumstance of one particular person that has been subject to ridicule, who has been subject to the most, I guess, disgusting side that the anime community or any fandom really uh, has, unfortunately, as a result of the airing of episode 6 of Oshinoko. So let's read through this article. The Broadcasting Ethics and Program Improvement Organization, or BPO, normally publishes viewer complaints about the content shown on Japanese TV, but this time the Watchdog group fielded a different kind of criticism. At least one viewer wrote in to complain last month about a toxic subset of a certain anime's fandom, that being Oshinoko. In its May summary, the BPO published the following under the drama anime section. I'm going to read this verbatim. In an anime, there was an episode in which a female character in a dating reality show receives harassment and contemplates suicide. Because the portrayal evokes a real-life incident, the relatives of the woman who suicided expressed their discomfort online, and they have been receiving excessive harassment from a subset of the show's fans. The production company and broadcaster created the impetus behind these attacks on individuals. Should there not be an announcement of some sort to address this, then that's a that's a heavy complaint uh, to receive, and uh, unfortunately, as this complaint says, uh, this actually happened. As I mentioned, right when episode six of uh, Oshinoko got released, uh, there was a particular mother who made a formal complaint to Oshinoko about how the character, aforementioned character that I discussed at the beginning of this video, was depicting and gave off a little too many similarities to the story of that of her daughter. And that mother is the mother of Hana Kimura. The mother of professional wrestler Hana Kimura, who died by suicide in May of 2020 after being relentlessly cyberbullied for her actions on the Japanese reality TV show Terrace House, criticized the anime for capitalizing on the specifics of her daughter's death. The words that the character was exposed to are exactly the words that Hana was exposed to, she commented. We have talked about these things publicly through interviews and the like. How could those exact same words be used? I can't overlook the fact that Hana's death is being used like free source material. If you ask me, um, and this is just completely my opinion, I think Hana Kimura's mother has every right to make this complaint. I mean, you're a grieving mother. You lost your daughter at a very, very young age. Um, I believe she was still in her early 20s when she unfortunately took her life. And again, the circumstances that uh, a particular character is going through in episode 6 of Oshinoko is very similar. And there are definitely some similarities to that of Hana Kimura's story. Both of them were young females. Both of them were on a reality TV show. Both of them said and did some actions on the show that got a lot of people online and a lot of fans of the show very upset at them and both of them received a ton of online harassment and cyberbullying to the point where although in Oshinoko episode 6 the character in question attempting to take her life is stopped by the main character so there is a silver lining in that the same thing unfortunately did not happen for Kimura Hana. Now, let me make this clear. As of right now, uh, Akasaka Aka and Yokoyari Mengo, the two creators of Oshinoko, have not made any comments, and there has been zero confirmation as of right now as to whether they did actually take the story of Kimura Hana and decide to use it as a groundwork for this particular character in Oshinoko and their creation. So, it's really difficult to say who is to blame at the moment, but I, again, feel complete empathy towards the mother of Hana Kimura because this is a traumatic experience that, you know, a, a grieving mother doesn't want to remember and a, and a grieving mother just wants to move past from. And it's definitely a kind of moral gray zone as to, well, is Oshinoko in the wrong for, you know, using too similar of a story, uh, although that being a fictitious story. And although, you know, unfortunately, Kimura Hana's uh, situation and the character in Oshinoko's situation is definitely not the first time and will unfortunately probably not be the last time due to the nature of things like reality TV shows 
characters, which Oshinoko, again, did a, I think, pretty admirable job of breaking down and dissecting in a very real and hard-hitting way? Or is it the fault of the mother for complaining too much? And, no, you know, most people would think like, oh, well, it's clearly not the mother's fault. The, the mother is, it, it's, a, it's a grieving mother who is just trying to move on from her shocking daughter's death, right? So, of course, no one is there to blame the mother of Kimurahana, that would be insane, right? Well, uh, unfortunately, this is where a certain small, loud minority of the toxic anime fandom, more specifically the toxic Oshinoko fandom, stepped up to say some really horrible things. Last week's recap episode of Oshinoko featured some cast commentary on the events of episode 6, although there was no mention of Hana Kimura or the real-life backlash around the portrayal. Uh, Ruby Hoshino's voice actress uh, remarkably uh, remarks generally, I was able to observe her portrayal of the bit that depicted the gut punch feeling humans experience. Watching that really made me think some things over again. I think it was really meaningful for me at this point in my life to have been able to learn about that world. For his part, manga author Ag Sagaka has not issued any statements about the controversy, although prior to the episode's debut, he was alluded to the Hana Kimura incident as one of the inspirations behind his portrayal of Japanese show business. So there is definitely a, a segment that uh, Akasakaka took uh, from the Hana Kimura story, but I there, there was no confirmation that it is a direct reference to the Hana Kimura story. I think that's a distinction that is uh, very important to say verbatim. And again, uh, the toxic anime fandom, after hearing the complaints of Hana Kimura's mother about Oshinoko, instead of, you know, there was definitely a segment uh, uh, of fans that were very sympathetic towards her, being like, you know, I'm so sorry for your loss, you know, this is horrible. Um, I don't think anyone is at fault here. It's just an unfortunate circumstance that Akasaka Aka and just happened to create a storyline of a character that just so happened to be a little too similar to your daughter's incident. So it's unfortunate, but no one can really be blamed here. But at the same time, there was also a small minority of people who went out onto Twitter, onto blog posts in Japan and were relentlessly harassing the mother for over-exaggerating and for her trying to cancel the show because of her personal gripes with it. Which is just like, what the actual fuck is wrong with you guys? Like, this is a grieving mother, a real-life person who lost her daughter. And, and not that long ago either, it was only three years ago. So she's still in the process of healing from this horrible loss, and yet you're gonna go out there to defend your favorite anime of the season by relentlessly cyberbullying this mother? Like, did you not learn anything from watching episode six? You are literally doing what these fictitious people in episode six were doing to the character. You are literally doing the exact thing that the episode was telling you not to do, and yet you go about doing it to a real person, a real person who is in the state of grieving, who lost their daughter. Like, I, I see, uh, you know, I don't even call these people fans of the show. Like, they'll go up and, like, stand up for their favorite show, stand up for Oshinoko, being like, you're kind of overreacting with this stuff, aren't you? Are you trying to cancel the show? What the hell is wrong with you? No, what the hell is wrong with you? What What is wrong with you? What right do you have to go out there and cyber bully the mother who has lost their daughter due to very similar circumstances. Like, what is actually wrong with it? You're not a fan. You're not a fan of Oshinoko. You're just a horrible human being for doing that. In his recent interview with ANN, uh, Akasaka Aka stated, talents, entertainers who frequently appear on TV in Japan, can no longer ignore the internet. YouTube has become super popular, movies are watched with subtitles, plays are increasingly based on anime and manga, and there has been an instance of a suicide stemming from a reality show. Considering all these facts, I then decided to take a contemporary subject, something that is happening in the real world of Japanese entertainment today. That was the first concept. This is not like the first type of like dark side of show business that Oshinoko has thrown out into the world in its story. I mean, they touch upon all sorts of subjects. I mean, hell, the first episode of Oshinoko alone shows off the real extreme yet very real circumstances that could happen to someone in the Japanese idol industry. Like, this is a story that is touching upon all sorts of different elements of 
the Japanese entertainment industry, a, a dark part of the Japanese entertainment industry, which I think a lot of Japanese people kind of turned a blind eye to. And this is not just within the Japanese entertainment industry. Like these stories that you see in Oshinoko, these like real stories of these characters that they go through, the hardships, the trials and tribulations of all sorts happen all over the world. They, they happen in Japan, they happen in America, they happen in any entertainment industry. And I think that's why Oshinoko hits really different for a lot of different people. I mean, you know, as someone who does YouTube themselves, who is someone who has been online as an online personality for over 10 years now, it was like a really, it's, it's a great show, but it's sometimes it's a really difficult watch because the anxiety of thinking that like, that could happen to me, the, the you know, the like, and, and not to make this about me or anything, but I'm, um, you know, this is something about the show that I think is just so brilliantly portrayed. But at the same time, if someone watches that show and complains publicly like Hana Kimura's mother did because they themselves went through a similar experience that reminded them of a trauma, I'm going to be completely sympathetic about it because I'm a decent human being that doesn't go around cyberbullying a grieving mother. And it's just so sad. Like, it's so sad on all fronts. And unfortunately, as, as big as the anime community has gotten over, you know, the years that I've been doing this whole anime YouTube thing and, you know, discussion has gotten wider and the medium itself has gotten more popular. Again, with every growing fan base, there is always the rotting apple. There was always the rotting apples in the orchard who just ruin it for everyone. And this is a prime example of that, a prime yet disgusting example of how far people can stoop down to because they're trying to protect their favorite show. So this isn't even like a PSA. This isn't this isn't a public service announcement to not cyberbully. This isn't a public service announcement to bash the 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 a grieving mother because she saw too many similarities to her story in a show. This is just like a a, a warning, I guess, to anyone who you know, attacked this mother, anyone who has gone about doing that with other people, because this is unfortunately not the first story that has happened in the anime industry or the anime community. There have been countless, countless examples of people going against voice actors, people going against directors, people going against writers, people going against people associated with their shows and bullying them relentlessly because they don't get their favorite show and they don't agree that the show is universally good. Like, how obsessed do you have to be with something in order for you to stoop that low? So yeah, again, this is a very touchy subject, but I wanted to touch upon it because I think this is really important to bring out into the forefront because if people aren't doing this, people aren't talking about it, people aren't condemning people who go about doing this toxic as fuck shit, then, uh, you know, it's just going to keep growing the bigger the fan base gets. And I don't want that to happen to the anime community. I, I certainly don't want that to happen to the anime community, let alone any fandom, really. Like, people like that should not be part of the fandom. People like that should be booted off the fandom. People like that are not fans. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Again, uh, if you are yourself going through those kinds of struggles, then I've left the necessary links down in the description below. So please be sure to check it out. And yeah, just uh, take care of yourselves, guys. Um, you know, this can really happen to anyone. And if you are going through the stuff, then just, just know that you're not alone. And there are sources out there that are there to help you because no one wants to see anyone going through this kind of thing. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right here to subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger. Over here next to my head is a couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one and links to my social media, as well as my Patreon to support me directly and my YouTube shorts and TikTok down in the description. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.